Welcome to BA 300. I want to introduce myself. I'm Ed Barton. I'm going to be your instructor for this semester. And this is a survey course. So you're, we're going to cover a lot of finance over the course of the next eight weeks or so. Um, I'm going to walk through the uh, course structure and a syllabus here, but also want to encourage you that as you go through um, the class, you should feel free to reach out and contact me with any questions. This is not an easy course, um, and it is one that is generally easier taught over 16 weeks and in smaller chunks, like in a traditional class setting. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, and I'll reinforce this over and over again, that if you focus on getting the work done and work through the problems that are here, you're going to have no problem passing the course um, and you can do really well and I'm going to give you some tools to help you uh, move through the course um, but again it's a don't feel overwhelmed it can feel overwhelming there's a lot of material to cover I want to make sure you get a good baseline particularly for those of you who are going into finance or accounting as a major because you're going to be drawing on these concepts uh, consistently and for everybody else you're going to find that what you learn in this class is applicable to your personal life as much as your business life. And so the principles that you learn here are ones that you're going to be able to take away and apply at anywhere that you're working or even in your home. Uh, and so I want to be able to provide those principles. So as we're going through this, I'll point out the areas that are most important for things like tests, but also remember that the principles are really important and if you grasp the principles and you kind of struggle through some of the the math you'll do you'll still do fine um, explain to me how you're approaching it uh, but the principles are just as important so let me walk through the walk through the syllabus um, again you can find the syllabus and all the class materials on Moodle and Moodle is really our system of record for the class so get yourself comfortable with Moodle if you have questions on Moodle, contact um, contact the school, contact the library. They can help you through that. Contact me as well. Um, you're going to find that the other piece that you're going to need is the online uh, elements from uh, the book, the uh, Besley and Brigham book. And so there's a online section, and I'll do a separate um, video on the online section for that. Um, but that's going to be where all the tests and quizzes are in addition to a lot of supplemental material uh, you'll be able to get through the course essentially um, by utilizing the combination of the book um, and the book is not the greatest book and I'm going to provide you with a couple alternatives um, but you do need the online access and that's something that uh, is is where all the tests and quizzes reside I try and keep the cost down so it's uh, under $100 for the book uh, and the online access. The trade-off is the book isn't the best book. However, there's a lot of areas up between the internet and news books that you can uh, access to kind of make up the make up the stuff that's beyond the basics. So again, um, what you can see here is my um, email address. So you can feel free to email me at ebarton at sdmartin.edu. Um, also, uh, this is my phone number. I am currently uh, working, I used to work at the university. I was the, uh, the chief financial officer for the university and also um, was an assistant professor of business teaching finance and, and uh, business law. I'm off running a company in Florida um, right now and hope to someday come back to the university teaching. Um, but until then, um, you know, I don't have an office at the university. You should feel free to contact me on my phone. Um, text is generally going to be best, although you can feel free to give me a call. This is my phone number, office phone number. Um, I also receive texts on that number. Um, and again, this is my St. Martin's email. The textbook you're going to need, as we had mentioned, is the Besley and Brigham uh, CFIN 6 Corporate Finance from 4LTR Press. Uh, it also comes with, and make sure that you get the version with the online access. Um, and so again, I will do a separate video on the online access piece but this is available at the bookstore. It's also available online. Um, a couple of the things that we're going to talk through, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to read this thing cover uh, word for word. You're able to get it on Moodle. Um, 
but a few elements in the course descriptor you know it talks about asset management and all the other elements there's really three components that you need to understand in finance the first one is the concept of time value of money um, the second is the concept of risk and the third is the concept of how those two things interplay that's really what finance is and so when you hear things that revolve around time value of money risk or capital budgeting which is really putting those two things together that's kind of the pound the table most important sections of the class um, there is a prerequisite for accounting um, 201 and 202 because we will be doing some balance sheet income statement analysis in here and so as a result the accounting uh, background for that is is very helpful additionally you'll see math 201 is a prereq similar to most math courses this has a lot of problems um, in it and finance is really an applied mathematics course it takes the concepts of business and like I said talks about time value of money and risk and those are both quantitative and we attempt to quantify them in finance capital budgeting which is putting those two things together against a set of cash flows and trying to figure out whether to proceed with a project or not based upon the risk profile so there is a lot of math a um, couple pieces of good news uh, or at least I hope they're good news we're going to spend um, a fair bit of time walking through the the problems in class uh, and I'm going to be recording for each chapter I'm going to be doing a set of PowerPoints and a recording I'm also going to give you access to my prior classes um, PowerPoints and recordings and those were done in classroom settings so you're going to hear some back and forth with students um, what I'd encourage you to do is read the assignment um, take a look at the information that's in the book then get online um, in Moodle you're gonna see that each of these lectures is gonna be recorded and put up in Moodle um, in a similar format to this you should be able to play it I talk somewhat fast we should be able to play it faster than a 1x um, so you should be able to play it a little bit quick quicker listen to the listen to the uh, chapter once then I would recommend you move into um, the electronic Cengage electronic uh, online um, portal take the quiz see how you do um, so go through the exercise take the quiz um, at that point if you've run into some issues the quizzes you can take over and over again um, so come back take a look at the um, areas that you might have had a challenge with do some focus in that area listen to the lecture there maybe listen to a couple of the other lectures and then try the quiz again the secret to success in this class is really working through the problems and so the way I've approached it is the quizzes here are similar to homeworks in other classes where they're required um, they comprise 40 percent of the grade each uh, chapter has a has a quiz and we'll, we'll again talk through that um, but like a math class the key to success is practice and so you can try the quizzes over and over and over again and I will take the highest grade on any of the quizzes and again talk about that in a moment but math is important if you're weak on math or if you have a challenge with Excel because the book will talk a lot about financial calculators nobody uses financial calculators anymore except professors who like financial calculators I would encourage you to do all the work in Excel I'm going to show um, some examples in Excel I'm going to give some some practice problems in Excel I'm going to put some Excel tutorials up in Moodle as well and hopefully when you get done with this class you're going to have an opportunity to work through and be familiar enough with some of the basic finance functions in Excel so future value present value um, and internal rate of return modified internal rate of return etc to be able to do basic finance calculations in Excel and so the math piece is important you need to understand the math concepts but you're not going to have to do manual math you should be able to use Excel or Google Sheets you should be able to use um, a financial calculator if you're so inclined um, but you know the math piece is it, it does have a heavy quantitative component in finance and so be prepared for that um, the goal here is for you to develop an understanding and basic proficiency in general corporate finance skills for those folks who are going to go on into an accounting or finance major you're going to get 
we're going to take each of these sections that we go through and you'll end up having entire semester long classes on things like investment analysis and capital budgeting and advanced corporate finance and budgeting and forecasting. We're going to give everybody just a surface level uh, understanding of what that is, which is what happens in a survey course. Um, and enough information so that you can make a determination, is this for me or not? And if it's not, if you end up in marketing or in general management, you're going to be exposed to finance concepts, which is why I said the concepts are important. And you're going to find that as we go through the tests and the quizzes, that there's a lot of questions that aren't, you know, calculate this internal rate of return. It's going to be explained to me the concept of internal rate of return and why it's important. Um, so again, the objectives are when you come out of the class, you should be able to understand basic financial statement analysis, basic capital budgeting, basic capital structuring, basic working capital management and corporate financial planning concepts and can do some of the basic math. Um, most of the information here, as noted, is going to be covered in the recorded lectures and I'll be posting those up in Moodle. I want to try and get the bulk of them out um, at the beginning of the semester. Um, so that you could move through the class at your own pace. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that when we go through some of the timeline. However, um, the information is going to be available on Moodle for the, uh, for the recorded uh, segments, as well as um, you, you're going to find some additional recorded segments in the um, Cengage uh, online tutorials as well with some areas around Excel, etc. Um, the midterm and final exams are going to be online tests. In prior classes where I taught traditionally, the um, midterm and final were um, done in class. Here they're going to be done online. Um, all tests are multiple choice. So if you test well and you multiple choice test well, um, you, should, you should do fine. They aren't timed, and so you should be able to take as much time as you need in order to be able to succeed um, on the test. All the tests, all the quizzes are open books, open notes, and use of a laptop is both permitted and encouraged. You're going to need to use Excel or a calculator or Google Sheets to do some of the calculations. And I want to get you practically trained up so you understand not only the concepts, which is something that a computer is not going to help you with, um, so again, the concepts are important, but the mathematics and the, the elements that are calculated, I want you to get comfortable with how that works in, in, um, in industry. And so, you know, from that perspective, it's, in, it's permitted and encouraged to use a laptop. Um, the week-to-week -week deadlines are not firm deadlines. Um, so I have taught this class four or five times, so I kind of know how to break it up. It comes in bite-sized chunks um, and like a math class it's progressive so if you start falling behind early it's tough to make it up late. So if you start falling behind early or if you try and wait until the end and just kind of try and cram it in you're gonna have a problem. Um, so what I would encourage you to do is get started early, move through the class as quickly as you can. If you run into a roadblock, immediately let me know that you're struggling with something so that we can arrange a time to either jump on a Google Hangouts and talk through it or you know go back and forth um, via uh, email so that we can kind of get the, get the issues resolved. If you struggle early, it's not going to get easier. It just continues, the concepts continue to build on themselves over time. And so um, what I encourage you to do is do as much as you can early in the semester. So if you do run into a blocker, we've got a little bit of time to be able to make that up. Um, you do have a hard deadline at the end. Um, so the school basically says by March 7, everything needs to be done. And I've got about 24 hours at that point to get grades in. And so as you're looking at planning your work, I'm going to give you a, an outline of how I would approach it, um, but recognizing that you know, you're all adults and should be able to manage your time, um, you've got some flexibility, you know, and life happens, you've got some flexibility around, around when to take everything, um, but you know, everything needs to be done no later than midnight Pacific Standard Time on March 7th. If you really want to pound this thing out, you can get the entire class done in a couple weeks at the beginning of the semester and no harm, no foul. Um, conversely, I, 
you know, if, if you start running up to the deadline, it's going to be very difficult to get everything done in a few days. So I'd encourage you to start early, work through it often, and try and get done early rather than delay it out or procrastinate. Um, so we'll talk grades um, quickly. Online assignments are going to be 40%. Those are the quizzes. Each chapter has a, has a set of quizzes. Um, there's a midterm exam which can be taken anytime but only be taken once. Um, so make sure before you go into that midterm, it's open book, open notes, it's not time to make sure before you go into that midterm you feel ready to take that midterm. You can only take it once. Um, on the online assignments you can take as many times as you want. Um, the midterm exam you can only take once um, and I'm going to take that that grade, that's 30 percent of the grade. The final exam will comprise 30 percent of your grade. Again that can only be taken once um, and it's going to be in similar format to the um, to the online assignments and the midterm in that all of them are multiple choice. All of them are randomized and they're randomized set of questions out of the uh, out of the, the test bank and you should be able to move through them. You will potentially see the same questions from the quizzes as you see on the midterm and the final. And so some of these questions might get reused particularly if they're ones that are interesting or more challenging so don't be afraid to pay attention to those those uh, quizzes take them as often as you want I'm taking the highest grade on those and you'll have an opportunity to do to do well on the midterm and the final um, this is the grading percentage so again this is the university standard so A to F what I would tell you is if you're working hard and everybody's working hard and, and as I mentioned this is a difficult class and it's then it's in a challenging format for all of us. And so I want to encourage you, get the work done. If you get the work all done and you submit everything and you've tried the quizzes a couple times and you're struggling through the quizzes and you do the midterm and the final and you've taken the quizzes a couple times and you've, you know, and we've been working together, you're not going to fail this course. As challenging as it is, you're going to pass this course. I don't allow anybody, you know, no soldier left behind. I don't allow anybody to, to kind of lag back too far. Um, on the other side, I failed a couple students in the history of this course, and it's because they didn't do the work. So they didn't do the homeworks, they didn't do, or they didn't do the quizzes. They didn't show up to class. Um, you know, they they kind of blew off the final. They kind of blew off the midterm. They're not going to pass. So I just encourage you work your way through it. Do the best you can. Um, what I've done almost every class is the grades have ended up um, getting curved, um, and that curve tends to shift up. So, you know, average grades tend to be in the high 70s to low 80s. Um, and I normally add three to five points to that to shift everything up so that the class um, medi uh, mean is around a B to B plus. Um, so again, if you're, if you're going, oh my gosh, I'm getting in the high 70s and I'm getting a C plus or a C or a C minus, you're likely to shift up about um, half a grade. Uh, as a result of the curve. So again, we'll talk through it and I'll post some additional updates as we go through the semester to kind of give you a feel. But what I want you to do is focus on getting the work done and don't worry about, oh my God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fail the class. If you do the work, you won't fail. Um, this is how I would break out the schedule if I was sitting in your shoes. And it's, I will certainly have all the lectures up prior to the weeks noted here. As I had mentioned, my intention is to try and get all my, my lectures up um, for this particular um, course uh, in the next uh, few weeks. So by, by the end of January, everything should be online. Um, having said that, um, I'm also putting immediately up on uh, Moodle links to the prior um, two or three courses that I would taught where you can watch these same videos are just not going to be quite as high quality um, but you're going to be able to get the same gist so you can move through it faster than I'm recording. Um, so again this in week one would be the review syllabus which is what I'm doing now. Online assignment walkthrough which we'll do um, in a separate video. You're going to get read and discuss chapters one through four so I'm going to have up um, PowerPoints etc for one, two, three, and four on the uh, on the on Moodle and you know I'd encourage you to as, as painful as it might be kind of throw those on 
um, and listen to and watch the um, recordings, look at the PowerPoints, make sure you understand what's going on. And really this first week is understanding key concepts in, in finance. So trying to just get a baseline of terminology and information and, and a better picture of what finance is. Week two, we're gonna, again, I'd be looking at chapters five through eight. So there's 16 chapters or so in this in this uh, in the book. We're gonna move through each one of them. Um, each one of them has, like I mentioned, a quiz attached, and I would be kind of moving through a, at this pace. Chapters five through eight is really looking at the valuation of financial assets. That's the beginning of where the math starts uh, picking up pretty heavy. The other thing I would do is I do make sure that by the end of the second week, all my quizzes were done for um, quiz one, two, three, and four, uh, or for um, chapters one through four. In week three, I would be doing you know chapters nine and ten. So I'd be looking at chapters nine and ten, um, going through the videos, going through the uh, the powerpoints and the Excel and then understanding capital budgeting. Again, as I had mentioned, capital budgeting is kind of taking the risk piece, and we're gonna get into risk a little bit more after this, but it's taking the risk piece and taking cash flows and trying to figure out whether to do something or not. And so it's decision making. And so, you know, those two chapters go together. I'd make sure that my quizzes um, were done for chapters five through eight. And then um, week four, I would be looking at chapters 11 through 13, um, so that's cost of capital. That's where the risk piece starts coming in and where we start to quantify risk and understand risk principles. Um, I'd make sure my, my quizzes were done for chapters nine and 10. And then sometime in that week four and five, I would knock out the midterm. So the midterm is set to be chapters one through 10. It is an online multiple choice test. Take your time through it. It should go. It should go fine. Um, but you get one shot at the midterm, and you could take the midterm at any time in the semester. Um, but I would target it for that week five. I'd take that week five to study up to make sure I understood. Um, to make sure I understood chapters one through ten fairly well. To do some practice, maybe redo some quizzes on some of the the uh, the chapters where you feel a little bit weaker. Because again, I'm going to take the highest score and then take the midterm exam and give yourself a little bit of a break. Um, so I'd be looking at that for week five, um, which is mid-February. Week six, um, once the midterm is done, then I'd be looking at chapters 14 through 16, which is basically the end of the, end of the book. Um, and that's really pulling a lot of the elements that we had learned through chapters one through 10 um, together and 11 through 16 essentially go, okay, how is this applied within the company or within a firm or within a, the government or within kind of a, a, a scenario set? And so I'd look at chapters 14 through 16. At that point, I'd understand the, the I'd make sure you got your uh, quizzes for 11 through 13 done. I would probably also, you can see there in week seven, um, I would also probably pull the quizzes from chapters 14 through 16 up. So, you know, 11 through 16, you could probably knock out in a week and a half or two weeks um, between weeks five, six, and seven. Um, week seven, I would do the comprehensive final, um, which again, now we're essentially, if we're starting here at the uh, middle of January, beginning of January, you're now basically at the end of February, beginning of the first week of March. Um, Take that time to study up for the final. Again, if you've got to retake some quizzes to get yourself familiar, get yourself familiar with those chapters, you get to take the final exam once. Um, and it can be taken at any time in the semester, um, but once you take it, it's, it's taken. Uh, the final is going to be a comprehensive final. So it's gonna cover all chapters one through 16, plus anything we may have discussed in class on, on Moodle. And that kind of leads me to the next to the next point. It's gonna be helpful if, and I'm gonna open up a couple discussions on Moodle for each of the chapters. If you can post your questions there, because then I can answer them back and your colleagues can see kind of what the questions are and what the answers are. And again, if, if you, don't feel, if you don't feel comfortable um, doing that, let me know. And I'm uh, happy to, uh, to answer questions directly via email. 
but I do think it's a it's a it's a valuable um, thing for folks to hear hear and see the questions and then get those questions answered. And so, you know, don't hesitate to put those questions up online. Let me answer them online so that everybody can see what's going on. Um, and, you know, we'll go from there. What I don't have in this class, and you tend to see a lot of times in these classes, are group projects and online participation. This is, like I said, closer to a math class um, than a traditional business class. Um, so I don't have a group project. I don't have um, an online participation grade. Um, but what I do have is a couple uh, options for extra credit if you feel like you want it or need it. So the first one is to submit a financial analysis of a publicly traded company using the methods learned in Lesson 2 or in Chapter 2. Um, again, two to three pages in length, um, inclusive of spreadsheets, and spreadsheets should be submitted electronically. We're going to talk through what this might look like, um, but it is an extra credit um, for 10 extra points on the final. And then um, you make you can review an article from The Economist or similar periodical um, and provide an analysis of the information in the article as it um, pertains to the course. Um, the review should be um, one to two pages and use APA citations. That's uh, you know for five extra credits and use a good writing style. If you're really struggling, let me know. Um, I've had students take advantage of both of these to, uh, to boost their grade. Um, what I won't do, and again, in the interest of being transparent, I've had students come to me and say, you know, I'm this close to a C plus. Can you, you know, increase my grade? Can't you just X? And I said, did you do the extra credit? Well, no. Did you, you know, do? Did you retake any quizzes? No. Well, I'm not going to take the step to increase the grade if you're not going to do these things. If you do everything and you've taken the quizzes two and three times and you've done the extra credit and you're still struggling and we get to the end of the semester, then you and I can enter into a dialogue around, you know, if, if, if you're short somewhere and trying to, trying to get to a goal, how we might be able to get you there. Um, but do the things that are set out here first before um, asking about the grades. Um, there's a lot of information here on um, important information around where you can get um, access to uh, university resources. So I'm going to point out the student handbook and academic dishonesty. This should all be your own work. Even though it's open book, open notes, open internet um, on everything, it doesn't do you a hell of a lot of good. Excuse my language. It doesn't do you a heck of a lot of good if all you do is have someone else do the work for you. Um, you know, you're paying a fair bit of money to go through the class. It's going to be uh, to your benefit to learn it. So I'd rather see you struggle through it and with an understanding that if you do the work and you bust your tail, you're not going to fail, um, then have someone else do the work for you. But you know the academic dishonesty uh, elements at the University apply. There's a link to the handbook here. Um, here's how to access Moodle. Again, you're going to need Moodle. It's really important for this course. It's going to give you the access to this as well as other um, resources. The other thing you're going to need is access to the Cengage online, and I'm going to go through that in the next video. Um, here's some of the helpful links for the registrar, um, the library, research assistance, um, library chat service, research guides, um, tutorials from the library, um, and again, here's some of the elements that I have to put down. You can read this on your own, but at the bottom line, you're expected to do your own work. You're expected to cite what you uh, reference if you're if you're doing a paper, um, if you're doing calculations and need to submit backup documentation, save the spreadsheet and email it, um, or post it to Moodle. But that's um, you know you're you're essentially to do your own work, and you guys have been doing this long enough if you're in this class to understand what that means. Um, so you can I don't anticipate anybody in this class will have to go through the academic dishonesty and appeals process. Um, but I am required to put it on the, uh, the syllabus, so here it is. Um, and again, the syllabus is available in Moodle as well. Um, if you do have a uh, need for accommodation for accessibility to the internet, and again, this is a web-based course, there is a significant number of um, recorded uh, elements associated with the course. 
If you do need accommodation, please contact um, Disability Support and let them know that you need accommodation. And if you are unsure whether you need accommodation or not, please contact Disability Services and allow them to, uh, to work with you to try and figure out how we can best um, accommodate your needs. Uh, and their contact number is right here. Um, and feel free to contact them. It's a, it's a university service, doesn't cost you anything to use. Um, and if you feel at all as if you might need accommodation, whether that's um, for, for a physical or learning uh, elements, please contact them and they can help you out. Um, finally, if you've got a, uh, if you've got, if you need to request or you receive an incomplete, um, here's some information on requesting an incomplete. I've only had a couple incompletes. Those have been soldiers who have had to deploy mid-semester. Um, one finished, one didn't. You have a very short period of time following the close of the semester to complete the I. Um, so again, this course has a lot of flexibility associated with the schedule. You should be able to work through it or around it. Um, if you're hearing rumblings that your unit might be deploying um, during the course of the semester, it's only seven, eight weeks long. Um, you know, you can accelerate, you can slow down, you can, if you've got to be gone for a couple weeks, you can handle that as well. Um, but if you do end up with an eye, you've got a relatively short period of time to be able to complete that eye. Um, and so just be smart about it, um, and that's um, your responsibility to do. And note, if a grade change has not been submitted within the allotted time, I grades convert to an F. Um, so again, don't put yourself in that position. Um, try and wrap it up and work with me if you need to work with me to try and get that done. Um, again, welcome to the course, welcome to the semester. Looking forward to working with each and every one of you. And uh, cooperate and graduate, and we'll be seeing you in the next course.